Hey guys, TGKS Productions. So for this video, I'm going to be showcasing the intro of the new naturalist role that's been added to Red Dead Online. I'm also going to be presenting to you a beginner's guide in this video for this role, basically explaining how this role works and really how you should be playing it or what you should be doing when starting up this role. Now the update that brought this new role featured a lot of new content, I'm not going to be covering every bit of new content in this video. I'm going to be having some other videos for this update that I'll be releasing this week. But this video is solely, for the most part, going to focus on, you know, helping players start up with this new Frontier Pursuit role. In the case of this video does run long, I'm going to likely have timestamps in the description that we can sort of sift your way through this video when learning how the naturalist role works and read that online with this beginner's guide. And one more thing I want to say really quickly before we get into the introduction of the naturalism role. I talked about the other day when preparing for this update how I said if you had to choose between the rule or the out or the new outlaw pass, if you were you know short on gold, I said choose the rule over the outlaw pass. I would still say that because the outlaw pass works how they how the pass two have where you automatically start ranking up with the outlaw pass whether you bought it or not. You just don't necessarily get all the upgrades with the outlaw pass if you don't purchase it. And you have till October 19th to purchase it as well as max it out. This is actually only 80 levels as opposed to the past two, which is 100 levels. So I just want to say that, state that really quickly. If you are short on gold and you have to choose between the two, definitely go with the roll first, which costs 25 gold bars because, again, you can purchase the outlaw pass over the next couple or few months and still get the unlocks. So in order to trigger the introduction for the naturalism rule, you have to travel to the town of Strawberry and go to the hotel located in that town. And from that point, you will be able to trigger the naturalism introduction and ultimately purchase this role at the end of it. McMillan! Get down here! This has got to Madam, stop! Madam, please! No! Uh, yeah, I'll be right with you! I know you're up there! <laughs> oh, marvelous! There she is! Just what I need, the crazy wood nymph! Can a man take a bath in peace? What the hell is that? It's a panther. Oh, you savage! And a nice clean one now, too. This is going above the mayor's bed. Okay, uh, Mrs. Hobbs will be by to handle the taxidermy. Oh, travel safe, my friend. Wait, who are you? Where's Cecil? Glenn. I'm a friend of his. Cecil had to take a few days off. Mm-hmm. Or stress. Is there any uh, animal that you have not slaughtered? Oh, you flatter me, Miss. Sorry, Davenport. I really will be right with you. The answer's no, but I'm retired, as you know, and have been for some time. Yes, and how many have you out there killing for you now? Not nearly enough, I'm afraid. Business is booming. What about you there? You a hunter? Gus McMillan, master craftsman of fine clothing and accessories. Here's my card. I pay top dollar for animal furs and parts. The rarer, the Don't better. Don't listen to him. Unbelievable. How do you sleep at night? On the tiger bed spread, my dear. Seriously, come see You're me. You're no better than a murderer. And one day, you'll be seen as such. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Would you mind taking us outside? I don't want you. Shut up, Glenn. Listen, soon as a squirrel finds a cure for tuberculosis, let's oh, talk. If intelligence is the barometer oh, of who has geez. the right to live or die, you should have been court-martialed at birth. Annoying, isn't she? <laughs> See him? The only thing he had on his mind was hunger, sweetheart, but I pulled the trigger. Survival of the fittest, didn't that your mentor's trite catchphrase? It's not survival of the fittest. You are killing to line this your own pockets. This is how I make my living. We don't all have a rich daddy. While you're camped out in the woods, making witches brews and talking to the wildlife, the rest of us are doing some real work. You think work. this is some big joke? Oh, oh, that, that's what? enough! You ah, all is that ah, crazy ah, shrew. Ah, ah, they ah, should ah, throw you in an asylum. <laughs> That's it! I quit! You can tell the mayor I've gone home! <sighs> oh, <laughs> sorry about that awful man. Harriet Davenport, I've been in the field now for three years, studying the hidden interconnections between animals of all species. <laughs> I've seen everything. <laughs> Joy, disgust, regrets, envy. <sighs> We're so much more alike than we are different. I'm on the brink of discovering the pathways that link all life. I, I just need more research material. I have in here detailed notes on pretty much every animal from armadillo to anisbird, including the locations of some truly impressive varieties. I would be willing to sell this to you. 
if you will commit to bringing me anatomical samples from live species and <sighs> promise not to carry out any more animal side <sighs> in pursuit of Gus McMillan's greed. I'll pay you, I'll pay you, of course. I promise I'm good for the money. Let's learn from nature, not destroy it. Come on, I, I see something in you. I am so close. Excellent, excellent. Oh, we've been brought together for a reason. I strongly feel that. I've been experimenting with tonics that can provide access to remarkable new pathways of communication with other species. You have to live as they do, eat as they eat, hop as the toad, dig as the mole, love as the badger. <laughs> I've seen. You just have to open your mind. Join me on the voyage of discovery. So definitely a very interesting cutscene there. It wouldn't be the first time our character, I guess you could say, got drugged. Reminded me of the Philip Carlier Legendary Bounty mission. But in any case, purchase the Naturalist Roll at this point. You can see we got a few items like the Sample Kit, Legendary Animal Map, Animal Field Guide, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video and discuss those. But in any case, you see here, these are the, uh, the four-tier system of the naturalist role or the 20 role levels that we've seen with the past four frontier pursuit roles and there's a number of obviously unlocks here or like skills such as being able to like store i, I reckon or i saw here is being able to store more tonics in your satchel or more items in your kit number of like pamphlets with this with this unlock uh system with the naturalist role as well and i'm not going to be putting a major focus on this right now just because obviously i'm not going to be reaching rule level 20 today which is when the update released, or at least when I'm recording this video. I'm going to eventually make another video, hopefully in the, in the near future, covering sort of like a rule level 20 guide or, or what you, how you're going to sort of run the role once you max out the level. Because with the past four roles, when you unlock a number of these unlocks, the way that you sort of run the role in the beginning changes a little bit by the end. So that's why I'm likely going to do it, you know, a different video talking about that and, and emphasizing more on these unlocks but these are all the unlocks that you can get and again this is the same as you know what we've seen with the past you know four frontier pursuit roles at this point and i'm assuming you know any other roles we get in red dead online are likely gonna you know continue this way as well So you can see here we're getting some notifications at the top left corner of the screen talking about Harriet and how she'll likely or she'll eventually update our legendary animal map. And I'm assuming that sort of goes with as you roll or level up the naturalism role as well as possibly maybe how the legendary bounties work, how Rockstar confirmed they're going to be adding legendary animals within the coming weeks. So I'm assuming what they mean by when she's going to update them of recent sightings. I'm assuming that's likely going to be split between ranking up as well as the new legendary animals are going to be added in. And then you also saw a notification with Gus there that talked about how you can sort of sell carcasses and pelts to him as well as they could be used in crafting too. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at both of these characters. Both these characters are what this role revolves around. It's almost like a split role or a two-part role because these characters are very different from one another and what you the activities that you do for both characters are very different. Um, so we're going to be discussing both of these characters. These characters can be found at uh, in numerous places around the map, there's not one specific place that you can find uh, these characters. I believe uh, Harry Devonport can be found in three different places, as well as uh, or Gus McMillan can be found in six different places around the map. And we'll be discussing all that, but first, the character I want to look at is Gus McMillan. I want to look at him first. He's sort of the character that I, I got into first with this role, and I started sort of learning you know, how, how this role worked with him, and that's what we're going to be looking at first in this video.
So Gus McMillan sort of acts as this glorified butcher, I guess you could say. And he's actually located in six different locations around the world of Red Dead Online. So pretty much all the way from the east to the west, there is a location with him. And from my experience, each of these locations has the same content or items that you're able to buy. It, the, you know, the way that he functions as far as being able to sell pelts, carcasses to him, that functionality remains the same across all six locations. So coming up to one of Gus's locations here, you're going to see when we get to the table, we're going to have two options. We're going to be able to sell stuff to him as well as buy stuff from him. And we're going to first look at selling to him. And as I said a little bit earlier, selling to him is just like selling really to any other butcher in any of the towns in Red Dead Online. Uh, he pretty much takes everything the butcher takes in any of those towns with the exception of fish. He will not take fish. He, you cannot sell fish to him. And for the most part, the prices for what you're getting for these items seem to be the same as you're getting selling to the butcher as well in the towns. So the prices seem to remain the same. However, the main reason why you're going to want to sort of sell to him is really for the items you're going to be able to purchase, what you're going to see here next. So as you can see, there are five buying options when at one of Gus's locations. See the first one here is garment sets. These require uh, perfect legendary pelts. And those are the only two that are there right now. I don't know if as you level through the 20 rolls, there will be more or as uh, you hunt more legendary animals or even as more added into Red Dead Online as Rockstar's confirmed in the coming weeks. You know, I'm still very new to this role as well. So, you know, that may obviously the number there might change because there's only two right now as far as garment sets are concerned. You can also see a number of these clothing items here like, you know, gauntlets, hats, ponchos, which all require you to pretty much have like a perfect skin or carcass. And that's really the main reason why you want to deliver perfect skins and carcasses to him is for the sake of being able to craft the items that can be bought from him, or at least most of the items that can be bought from him, specifically with the clothing there. Now the third buying option from Gus, the trinkets, I would say are probably the most useful what I've definitely put my money towards as far as Gus is concerned. Unfortunately, all do require you to put a collectible in, sort of goes a little bit, gets a little bit against the collector role. It may be prohibiting you from complete, completing some collections, but they all require at least uh, some sort of animal material like buck antlers or a beaver tooth, as well as a collectible. But you can see that they all have effects such as like decreasing like uh, stamina or health drain for your horse or picking two times the amount of herbs for like a, for very popular crafting herbs. This could definitely be very beneficial. So I definitely would recommend putting your money towards these. I would say probably these are, are the most beneficial out of all of Gus's options. So the fourth buying option here allows you to buy a variation for the improved bow, which can be bought from the catalog or for one of the gunsmiths. You can also see some saddlebags there as well that can be purchased. And pretty much the final or fifth buying option, the ammunition, allows you to buy arrows, I believe just some regular uh, varmint cartridges, and then some nitro uh, ammo, which actually goes towards the new rifle that was added to Red Dead Online with this update, the elephant rifle. So pretty much what I've seen with that rifle, and I might do even a more in-depth review with it, is that ammo is very um, has really high damage. I believe that's really the main, I guess, perk of having that gun and having that ammunition is that it has very, very, very high damage. And I believe that that rifle can only take nitro ammo, but definitely can be helpful when, you know, hunting with this role or engaging with the natural naturalism role as a whole especially with Gus because he pretty much is the one that wants you to kill the animals you know especially with like legendary animals which could be maybe a little bit stronger as we might see later so you know having that weapon may definitely help so before we move on to Harriet and sort of the part that she plays in the naturalist role there's a few other things I want to talk about regarding Gus and one specific thing here is one of the trinkets the buck antler trinket now the description for this the info sort of confused me a little bit for this one, and apparently, I researched this, apparently this is around in story mode. Uh, a lot of the features that are in this update were really in story mode as well. A lot of this has been sort of carried over to online from Red Dead Story, a lot of what's in this update. And apparently the Buck Antler Trinket was an item that you could get in story mode after hunting the legendary buck. I believe you could get it from a fence. And apparently what it was supposed to do from, like I said, the research that I've done is... If you hunted, like, say, an animal carcass, it was like a two-star, and I'm not sure if it was all animal carcasses or maybe just deer, 
it likely was all animal carcasses, but I'm a little bit unsure. Supposedly, if it was only a two star, you still had a chance of it maybe being a three star. I guess when you skinned it or when you when you went to go collect the animal. That's from the research that I've done. I'm not 100% sure about that. If you know something about that trinket that I don't, definitely leave a comment. But that supposedly is what that trinket is supposed to do. And again, that is from the research that I have conducted on it. Something else that I want to mention is the clothing items that you can get from Gus, as far as ones that have multiple variations, you can see here, I'm looking at the lawn cliff pants that have multiple different variants. And if you only have, like, for example, I only had one perfect buck skin at the time, which is required to make these pants. If you only have one, you're only going to be able to get one variation of the pants. It's not like if you have, you know, one skin, you're going to be able to get all variations of the pants or also, you know, any other of the clothing items from Gus as well that require like, you know, an animal carcass or skin. You're only going to be able to buy one variation if there only is, if there are multiple variations. If there are multiple variations, if you want to get the other variations, you're going to have to come back with more skins and more carcasses. So I also want to state that really quickly as well. Now, one of the last things I'm going to mention here for Gus that I thought was actually very interesting is you can actually spawn in the hunting wagon, take it to Gus, you'll be able to deliver to Gus what is in your hunting wagon. So if you have multiple carcasses in there or skins, you can donate or sell those to Gus. And what's even more interesting is I even ended up trying this with the butcher's table as well in Tumbleweed, and you can even do it there also uh right. the hunting wagon has to be much closer to the butcher's table in order for it to register that it is there but you can also donate uh, or sell what is inside your hunting wagon to the butcher's table as well in the towns i know i don't know if that's always been like that yeah. personally you know i don't really go to the butcher's table too much anymore unless it's for like a daily challenge or i'm maybe selling fish most of like my animal materials and definitely skins and carcasses I'm delivering for crypts for the sake of my animal materials and benefiting my trader role. But for the sake of the hunting wagon with Gus, I definitely think this can be helpful. Obviously, a, a number of his items do require skins and you can store a lot of skins on your horse. But there also are a lot of, you know, or there are some items and maybe even some will be added in the future that require you to have carcasses. And I think if you're, you know, you want to deliver multiple carcasses to Gus having the hunting wagon can be helpful because instead of having to make, you know, multiple trips to Gus, you could just put them in the hunting wagon, make one trip. It's going to be a lot more efficient. So I, I also thought that was very cool that you could use a hunting wagon when, you know, traveling to one of Gus's locations as well. So now we're getting to the part that Harriet Devonport plays in the new naturalist role. And as you can see here, Unlike Gus, she can only be found in three different locations around the world of Red Dead Online. I don't know if these locations may increase in the future, but as of now, she can only be found in three different locations. So we're coming up to one of the three locations where Harriet Devonport is located. And I would say that arguably most of the natural scroll sort of circulates around her. I would definitely say it's arguable a lot of what you're involved with, but... You'll see here, This uh, we have three options. We have the option, to, or before we enter there, we had an option to sell, buy, and do missions, which we'll, the sell option was grayed out, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. But right now we're looking at what you can buy. And she has a very similar setup to like what a fence would have, where you can you can look at everything, you know, or there's an all tab, and then there's sort of everything separated. Madame Nazar, I believe, ha has a similar sort of menu or setup like that as well. There's a lot of different items here that are locked by role. So you can't necessarily get these, at least, or at least as a beginner, you're not going to be able to get these. Uh, but there's definitely a very lot of, a lot of different interesting items here, you know, with tonics, such as even like weight loss tonics. But I would say more interestingly, you were able to buy a number of tonics that you actually need pamphlets for to craft that you actually unlock with uh, or through the 20 role level system of the naturalist role. And typically anything that needs a pamphlet rather than online, usually you really can't buy it. I'd say just about everything, if not all items that need a pamphlet, you can't just outright buy. You actually need the pamphlet and you need the ingredients as well. Whereas you can sort of choose either get the pamphlet, I guess, once you unlock it or just buy the items. So that's definitely a little bit different there. But that is pretty much what you're able to buy from her. What was just shown. That's everything for now. So one little thing here I want to state here really quickly. You saw when I backed out of the buying option, go to the mission option, which we're going to talk about next. It backed me out of the interaction with Harriet altogether. 
And that gets to be annoying when you're trying to go back and forth between all the options. Hopefully they change that in the future. That gets to be a little bit inconveniencing. But you'll see here I have these legendary animal missions as well as a start poach mission or start poached animals, which is the mission I just started and we're going to talk about next. But first, I wanted to quickly regard the two legendary animal missions. Originally, I thought that those... And they're locked right now. You have to be rule level five to engage with them. But originally, I thought that those two legendary animal missions were different for all three locations. However, I do not believe that's the case. I believe they are actually the same for all locations or all three of your locations. They just seem to fluctuate from time to time. At least the second one, I've noticed the second legendary animal mission has changed. Uh, but the first one, I believe, with like the uh, legendary uh, cross fox, that appeared to be the same for the most part. But the second one seemed to fluctuate from time to time. I don't know how much has really changed. Obviously, I have to experiment with that as I progress through the role levels. But nonetheless, they do seem to be the same for all three of your locations. They just change from time to time, which again, you know, if it changes with one location, it's going to change with the other location as well. So it does appear that she works like Gus, where pretty much everything appears to be the same at all of her locations. Now with these poached animal missions here, which is what you can see up here on the screen, the mission I just started, you'll see that when you get to this location, it's going to be like a campsite, a timer is going to begin, the two icons under the timer represent the animals you have to end up uh, releasing from their cages, and then also it says take out the poachers, so these are just the enemies that are holding the animals at these campsites. For the most part, I tried at least one of these missions at all three of Harriet's locations, and for the most part, they're all the same. They just obviously take place in different areas. You may not always be setting free the same kind of animal, but pretty much all of them seem, you know, appear from my experience to run the same. You go to the location, you have to take out these poachers. It's going to be probably about like 12 to 15 of them. You're going to have to take out at the campsite. Usually by the time you get down to, you know, maybe the last few enemies, you eliminate all of them. There's going to be like three to five more enemies that will respond. You're going to want to obviously take them out as well. And then, you know, end up freeing the animals. I will say that, you know, two things I will say with these missions. Definitely, I recommend that you do loot the enemies. You will have a chance of potentially getting a perfect pelt, which obviously, you know, whether you're selling it to the trade, you know, or selling it to the butcher, taking it to Crips for your trader role, or giving it to Gus, you know, it's going to be more beneficial. The perfect pelts seem to be a little bit more rare looting from these enemies. They got way more good pelts rather than perfects, but you do have a chance getting those, and also you have a chance getting collectibles. I did get a few collectibles when looting as well. So I do recommend looting with this mission. And also, I will say, when you are letting the animals free, you're probably going to want to be on your horse when you do that, just because some of the animals that you actually end up freeing are predators. And as soon as you open the cages, they will come after you almost immediately. In fact, there was a couple times where I think one time I was, I was releasing cougars, another time like bears or grizzly bears, and pretty much one of them, as soon as I let them out, they, they attacked me immediately. I had, to, I had to end up killing them. I really had no other choice, so pretty much defeated the purpose of the mission. But all in all, I would have to say that probably in the long run, if there are no other missions that are added or unlocked with this role, it's always just going to be these post missions. I would say most of these players, or most players probably aren't going to play them. I'd say the main benefit right now of playing them is you do end up getting uh, 150 roll XP for playing these missions. Uh, but that is really about it. I don't even really believe you get paid for them. I'd say the main incentive is just to get the Rolex piece. That's why I believe most players probably won't play this in the wrong. But nonetheless, they're cool to try out, get at least the experience of. But anyways, I just want to sort of run through real quick how you want to really run these missions. Now, the next thing I want to talk about here is the Animal Field Guide. And you can see this can be found in the items list of your weapon wheel under the kit category. This is one of the two items you get when you invest in the naturalist role. Uh, when you get the sample kit, it comes with the animal field guide as well as the legendary animal map. But this is arguably where I would say a lot of the money can be made with this role, with this animal field guide. You will end up seeing here that there are a total of 10 categories of animals that you can research as well as trade in to earn cash from. They can be traded into Harriet. We're going to go into more detail with that later. Uh, nine of these 10 categories can be traded in. In fact, there's one category, the common critters category that you can only research. And we'll also talk about the research later as well. But there are nine that you can sell. Uh, five are just sort of normal animal categories. And then there's four different legendary animal categories. Those are going to sell for a lot more than the regular animal categories if you were to trade them in. But you'll also see with the legendary animals that 
some of them are locked. I'm assuming some of these are probably locked because of rule level, as well as, you know, it's possible that Rockstar has not added some of them in the game because they said they're going to add legendary animals in the future. So that is definitely a possibility there. Some of the things you're probably seeing here is stamped uh, or stamped the categories traded. Stamped just means that you sold a sample to Harriet. So if you sell one of the uh, animal samples in a certain category, it'll come up that you have you know that stamped in that collection. So for example, if I were to you know have the white-tailed deer stamped in the category that it's associated with, it'll say you know one of how many in the you know if in that category of animals that there are because obviously I only have that one stamped. So hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the video as far as like how you really make money with this. And then once you trade in one sample of every animal in a category, you can trade in the category and that's actually how you earn the, the amount of money that's actually down in the left corner of the screen. It's a very interesting system of how this works, a little bit different than how I expected. But like I said, we're going to talk about all of that later, I think you're going to, or, you know, shortly here, you're going to see just how, um, how this works. And what's really interesting, I was doing some math here and apparently, and like I said, I'll show this later as well. Apparently you can hold, uh, 10 of every, uh, regular animal sample. So like the ones that are non-legendary animal categories, all the other ones you can hold, uh, the animals that are in those categories, you can hold 10 of their samples and then the legendary animal categories the animals that are associated in there you can only hold three of those samples and i did the math if you were to sell at least uh one of every category you know just if you had one sample of all the animals that are all, in all 10 or all nine of these categories you can sell here you would earn two thousand nine hundred and ten dollars if you actually had 10 samples of all the regular animals with all those categories as well as the th your three samples of all the legendary animals for those categories, you'd actually earn $12,580. And like I said, we'll go into a little, you know, we'll go into more detail later in this video on really specifically how all this works. It's somewhat similar to the collector rule, but not exactly. But for the most part, from a beginner's standpoint, this appears to be where I would say most of the money can be made with this role. And I would say how this role is going to be the most lucrative as far as you know how you're gonna be able to make the most money from it so the next thing i want to discuss here and this is sort of still on the animal field guide the animal field guide is sort of a two-part guide i guess you could say you have to research animals there's a progress for that as you can see here i'm sort of showing you a after and then i'm going to show you before of me researching or completing the research for the banded gila monster but you can see here there's seven I guess, objectives or requirements you have to complete in order to max out the research. And I wanted to talk about this because if, if you are trying to do this and possibly also, you know, be collecting samples for Harriet so that you can also be making money, I do believe there is more a more efficient way to go about this as far as like how you go about researching, collecting samples. And that's really what I want to talk about specifically focusing on the research here and trying to, you know, complete your total progress for an animal. So in order to efficiently complete this research, you essentially have to hunt two of the same animal. And the reason for that being, if you go back to the seven requirements that I showed previously, there was, a, there was seven there. And if you essentially, you saw there that some of them were like killing, skinning, sedating, grabbing samples. If you kill an animal, you can no longer sedate it and grab a sample. Vice versa, if you get a sample, you can no longer skin the animal. So this requires you to, in order to max out all seven of those objectives, those requirements, you have to essentially hunt two of the same animal. You'll see here, I'm showing you the banded gila monster, me hunting the banded gila monster. I also took a blending tonic. This allows me to get much closer to the animal. It's easier for hunting, easier for getting samples. But I decided to kill this, this banded gila monster as well as uh, you'll see me skin it. Essentially, I completed three requirements. I completed the skinning the killing as well as studying. So I completed three out of seven. You don't actually have to study the animal. I know that is an actual option, but if you just go up and skin the animal, you're pretty much gonna get that out of the way right there automatically, which is nice. The reason why I decided to kill this animal is because it was a three-star pelt. And this is sort of what determines whether I'm gonna sedate the animal, get the sample, and then just let it go, or if I'm gonna kill the animal and skin it. Because again, all that needs to be done for research and you have to do it twice in order to complete all of it. And I, and I just described why previously. I decided to kill this because it was a three-star Banagilla monster. Because I had to skin it anyway, I'm going to have a better 
pelt or better skin that I can either take the Crips for my trader role, I can take the Butcher and sell for, you know, obviously a higher price. Or if Gus requires this pelt for a certain like item that he can craft, I'm going to be able to do that as well because obviously everything that's, that requires him to have a pelt or, you know, and a pelt or a skin for, it has to be perfect. So that is the reason why I decided to kill this Gila monster instead of sedate it and end up grabbing the sample. Now, pretty much at this point, I have four out of seven of the requirements left for the research. I have to photograph the animal. I have to track it. I have to grab a sample and sedate it. Uh, I was started tracking a banded Gila monster right here, as you can see. I did end up having to hunt a third animal. The reason why is because I was actually testing something. I was testing to see if you could take a picture of the animal when it was dead or if it was sedated and see if it counted it. And from my understanding, it does not. You have to take a picture of the animal either when it's, you know, not sedated or obviously not dead. Pretty much when it's alive and moving around, that's the only way it's going to, from my experience, from my research, that's the only way that it's going to count the photograph of the animal. So that's why I actually ended up having to hunt a third animal, but that was just because I was testing this. So I want to make that very clear. You can really take a photograph before or after, obviously, sedating an animal because it's still going to be alive. If you're going to take it before you, you know, you obviously, if you want to take it, if you're going to kill the animal, you're going to have to take it beforehand because once the animal has been killed, the picture is not going to register. So you can really take the photograph whenever you want, just as long as, you know, the animal that you, you're deciding to hunt is, you know, alive and moving. That's really the main, I would say, requirement there. I will also say when it comes down to taking a picture, I definitely like having the improved camera or the advanced camera rather than the just regular camera. What's actually nice is when you aim at an animal, if you have it, so I guess you can say in the crosshairs, it'll turn green. As you can see here with the Gila monster or the Bandit Gila monster. And also the maneuverability is just a lot better with this camera overall. Was quite expensive. It was like $540, like 22 gold, but... I definitely believe it's worth it. It's way more maneuverable than the old camera. The old camera, you can't even really move with it. Where this one, you can move around. The only thing I don't like about the new camera is it doesn't allow you to use it on your horse. Same as the old camera. But if you don't have enough for this, you're trying to save money, you can use the other camera or the camera that you've had all along to photograph animals. You don't need the improved camera, but I definitely would recommend it. Obviously, it has some new features to it. Maneuverability is a lot better. And I think just overall is definitely a better camera than the one that we've had all along. Something else I also want to mention as far as when you are hunting or specifically gathering samples for Harriet, you do need to have a varmint rifle for that. And you're going to have to have the sedative cartridge rounds, which can be bought from Harriet or any one of her three locations. Eventually, as far as rule level is concerned, you are going to be able to unlock a pamphlet for that that will allow you to pretty much craft those you know that ammunition so you won't have to buy it anymore as long as you have you know what you need to craft it but i just want to stay here real quickly as far as from my experience like smaller or medium animals if you're trying to gather samples obviously you're gonna need, like i said you're gonna need this varmint rifle you need the sedative cartridges it looks like with smaller medium animals it's around one to two shots or i would say around two shots to sedate like a smaller medium animal and then for a larger animal, it's I would say it's around from like I said from my experience about five shots to sedate, uh, you know, larger animals such as like a deer, something along those lines. Of course, those might vary for certain animals, but that seems to be around about how many rounds or how many shots you need to sedate smaller animals, smaller medium animals, as well as larger animals. Also, when you're shooting at them. You know, before you sedate them, you're going to get a critical X symbol as well as it's going to make a certain, it's going to make a distinct noise to state that this animal is going to be sedated within a few seconds. I really would not recommend keep shooting at it. You may end up killing the animal. I'm not really sure. Uh, I have not tested it that far, but I, I would recommend, obviously, once you get that critical X symbol, you know, as well as, you know, the sound. Just, you know, don't shoot it anymore. It's going to be sedated. It might run for a little, you know, a few more seconds, but it's going to end up being sedated and you will end up also being able to grab the sample. Now, one thing you may be wondering about and is somewhat unfortunate when trying to complete the animal field guide is when you are trying to complete the research for an animal as well as getting the samples, obviously, you know that Harriet doesn't agree with killing animals. And in order to complete the research, you have to kill the animal. 
And you usually will get a notification saying that, you know, if you keep doing this, Harry is going to be angry with you, essentially. And originally, I wasn't really sure what that meant, but I actually had an encounter with her where I went to one of her locations. She sprayed me with that weird spray and that she sprayed in the uh, introduction for this role. You end up blacking out, and then you s I spawned, at least for me, at sh not too far away from where she was at. It was kind of like an irritating spawn because I had to get back up onto the road. But I did spawn somewhat far away, and then I believe I had to wait around 5 to 10 minutes until I could interact with her again. So that seems to be what happens if you do upset her. Unfortunately, you do have to wait. For the most part, you, obviously, the animal field guide, you only have to research the animals, and as far as you know, that's concerned, kill those animals, complete the research one time. However, as far as the future is concerned, I thought about the trader role, and obviously the trader role, in order to run that business or role efficiently, you need to be hunting and killing animals and renting online. And what I'm hoping is, I, I really hope that this role as far as like her being angry with killing animals because it seems like most of the money revolves around her and in selling or trading in the category selling the stamps which like i said we're going to talk about here very shortly but it's going to be unfortunate if this does end up ruining the efficiency of running all roles simultaneously and i'd say specifically the trader role and her role because obviously if you're trying to engage with the trader role and then you're killing animals and then you're trying to go to her and then she won't you know obviously engage with you because you're killing animals Hopefully it's not going to be that bad. Obviously only waiting 5 to 10 minutes really isn't bad at all. But I hope that doesn't tend to increase. And I just hope in the long run it doesn't end up being too much of an inconvenience for running all the roles simultaneously efficiently. Obviously only time will tell and only gaining more experience will be able to confirm that. And obviously having a better answer for that as well. Now one last thing I want to talk about before we get into really how you make a, I guess, a lot of money with this role or at least how it appears most lucrative that's going to be the last part of this video but i want to just briefly talk about the legendary animals now also as i said earlier with when you get the sample kit when you invest in this naturalist role you get the animal field guide you also get this legendary animal map and i don't believe all the legendary animals or at least it doesn't appear that all the legendary animals are on this map uh, obviously as we looked at the animal field guide earlier a lot of them were locked so and obviously we saw with Harriet, there's a number of legendary animal missions that are locked to roll level. So I'm assuming as you level up rolls, you're likely going to possibly unlock more legendary animals. Rockstar has also confirmed that they're going to be adding more legendary animals in the coming weeks, you know, from this update. So I'm assuming, you know, the map could also be updated or, you know, the animal field guide as far as legendary animals are concerned could be updated with, you know, the addition of more legendary animals. But for the most part, I did use this map a little bit. I, I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't engage with Legendary Animals all that much. But uh, it does appear that you can randomly come across them in free mode. You'll get like a notification that says there is a Legendary Animal nearby. Came across two of them. In fact, one of them I actually ended up hunting and killing. And this it did take a lot of hits, this Legendary Animal. I'm assuming this is probably where the elephant rifle may come into play and with the nitro rounds like, again i mentioned earlier how the nitro rounds appear to have the strongest damage out of all ammo with the exception of like explosive ammo and incinerary rounds so i'm assuming where this is where the elephant rifle can obviously come in handy but all in all i didn't really spend a ton of time with the legendary animals obviously i'll be gaining more experience with that probably have more to say when i make my rule level 20 guide and you know obviously as rockstar adds more in the game, obviously, like I said, some are locked for rule level. They have to add more to the game. So obviously, experience will be gained. Uh, I, I know that obviously that you have the pheromones that are supposed to attract the legendary animals out if they're, I guess, if they're near you. Because I actually tried using the pheromones, and it just said that uh, no legendary animals were near me. So I do believe you have to have like something like a notification where it'll say that there is a legendary animal nearby, and then I'm assuming you're going to use the pheromones to help, obviously, bring them out or, or you know attract them. So I'm assuming how the how those work, like I said, I'm still going to have to test and, and mess around with those, gain some more experience. But I just want to quickly sort of talk about legendary bounties, or, or I'm sorry, legendary animals really quick in this video as well. So now on to the final part of this video, probably what everybody's been waiting for, maybe even skip to. That is really how you're making money with this role, how it's the most lucrative, at least at this point. You can see here, I completed the desert habitats category in the animal field guide it says i've had all the samples needed in that category and i could pretty much sell the samples 
to Harriet. And that is what I'm going to show you here next. What you have for me. Now, what you're seeing right here is what you want to do when making money with this role. I said earlier, this is a little bit sort of like the collector role in a way. It reminds me a little bit of the collector role where you can store multiple of the same samples, similar to how you can store multiple of the same collectibles. You can see I have, you know, some of these samples I have here I have multiple of. With all the regular or non-legendary animals, you can store 10 samples of those or up to 10 samples of those. Any legendary animal samples you have, which you can see there, that gold sample that I have in the top right corner, that's a legendary sample. You can only hold three or up to three legendary samples, or at least of the same animal. Now, what sort of threw me off here at first in sort of in alignment with the collector rule, because I thought it worked more similarly than it really does with that, was I figured that you did not want to do what I'm doing right now, and I am pretty much selling every sample individually. And I really didn't think that was how this was going to work. However, it is. In fact, you do have to sell every sample individually in order to complete a category. When you have a category completed, it will actually have a large stamp over it. And what you actually be able to do is you'll be able to trade that category in for cash. It'll tell you how much cash it's gonna pay you in the bottom left corner of the screen. The Desert Habitats one paid $80. So I made, I, I made money from all the samples I was selling, which wasn't a lot. I mean, some of it was under, some of the samples were under a dollar, but I did make money from that. And I also made money from trading in the category as well. So that's pretty much how you really earn money with this role and how you want to go about it. It also appears you get a fair amount of roll XP when you sell. And this was definitely a concern of mine because this role seemed like a very big grind when I first started. In fact, I really only reached roll level two in the first day, but I also only sold or traded in one category. And I, I got a thousand roll XP for doing that. So I, it's sort of like the collector role a little bit where you earn a lot of rule XP as well as even XP when selling. Uh, I, I think the collector role might be a little bit, arguably a little bit better with RP uh, or roll XP, but nonetheless, this is probably the best way to level up with the naturalist role. Now, what I'm going to show you here next is an example of what you do not want to do with this role, at least as far as making money with this role, specifically with these categories. So you're going to see here, I'm going to show you this. I have a sample completed for the black-tailed jackrabbit in the category that it's in. And I'm also going to end up selling another one here, even though I already completed a sample previously. And this is something you are not going to want to do. You can stock up on samples. That's not a bad thing. You know, maxing out the legendary samples as well as the you know regular animal samples. That's not necessarily bad. What you don't want to do is sell them all at once. Because what it looks like is... You only gain money once the entire thing is complete, the entire category. So if you're just selling the same animal, it doesn't appear to stack. It's not going to go towards the next category, at least from my experience and my understanding right now, it does not go to the next category. Therefore, if you're selling a second sample, you're, you're really actually wasting it in a way. Yeah, you're getting paid for it. It's a very small amount. You know, it could be under a dollar, but you want to save that for the category because that's where you're making the most money is with the categories. So don't, like I said, you can stock up on samples, but do not sell more than one sample when trying to complete the category. That is what you do not want to do. Now, just to clear up any confusion that may have arisen from what I just explained earlier, I, I put together a simple three-step guide, I guess you could say, or a list of what exactly you want to do and pretty much just reinstating what I just talked about but essentially, as far as selling to Harry Devonport, I know you can obviously sell to Gus as well. And, you know, you can definitely earn some money from him. Arguably, you're going to probably earn more money from Harry Devonport. I think that's going to be proven in the long run with this update, considering that you can trade in these categories, especially with the legendary animals. You can earn a lot from them. But in any case, the first thing I recommend you do is complete all samples for a category. Complete all of them. Uh, you know, you can, if you want to skip around categories a bit, you can but I recommend focusing on one particular category or at least before you go to sell, complete all the samples in that category before selling. Once you complete the category, you know, or all the samples in the category, sell only one of every sample from the same category. If you happen to have, you know, two of a certain animal sample, just save the other one, you know, or, or a different, even a higher quantity than that. Save the other one, only sell one. You, you don't want to be selling more than one at a time. And pretty much once you sell only one of every sample from the same category, you don't want to trade in the complete category. And then that way you're going to earn the bonus or the, or the category trade-in 
amount. What you don't want to do is don't sell more than one sample for the same animal at a time. And I pretty much just stated that. From my experience, like I said, it appears that they do not stack, that it's not going to go towards the next category. Uh, also, you know, if you happen to sell, you know, some samples, even when the whole, you know, collection or the whole uh, category wasn't complete, if you happen to, you know, come across that same animal again, you have another sample of it, do not, you know, sell that sample as well. Just hold on to it. That's the main thing. You know, you only want to be selling one sample at a time from an animal. And, you know, like I said, do not sell more than one sample from the same animal at a time, or at least until the category is completed, traded in, and you're able to restart it. In any case, guys, it's pretty much everything I have for you in this video. I do apologize for being very long. Typically, when a DLC releases for a new game, usually these videos tend to run a little bit longer. But like I said, I'll, I'll have timestamps in the description so you can sift your way through if you're only concerned about certain parts of this new role. It's been added with this update. But I do hope that this helps. I put a lot of time into this. This is a very detailed beginner's guide. And, you know, as always you guys have questions definitely please leave me a comment I'll be happy to help try to clear up any confusion you may have regarding this new role and read that online as always guys please don't forget to like subscribe share this video be sure to comment if you have any questions as i just stated and have a great day